Hello, Comantis9 here, another Topic of the Week video. A couple of things before I get started. One, I'm really close to 400 subscribers. I'm just a few off from that, and that's actually really exciting. Second of all, I just created a Discord server. The link for that will be down below. I made it so that you can talk about stuff, and that I can, you know, talk with people about different things, and you can also submit topics through there. It's the first time I've done something like this, so I'm sort of feeling it out and seeing how it works out. Now on to the actual topic. This week's topic was submitted by YouTube user Alan Knox, and their topic is Character deaths that should have happened. Even though it's not a popular opinion, there are a few I, that I feel needed to stay dead, like Agent Smith from The Matrix. That was just terrible. And Slappy for being the main villain again in Goosebumps 2, when there are so many other villains from Goosebumps than Slappy. It's like bringing back Zhao from The Last Airbender and giving him supernatural powers from the underworld. It's just stupid. Funny you bring up Zhao, because I'm going to talk about him in a slightly different capacity. But, yeah, I've talked a bit about characters that, you know, the characters that are killed off or characters that die, and how it's stupid, it's terrible, it's bad writing. It, it, that's usually, it's very common. A lot of writers tend to use that for drama or just because they don't know really what to do, so they'll, they'll kill off characters. But then there's the inverse, characters that should have either stayed dead or should have just outright died. And that's something I don't see as much, but it's still a problem. So there's a few that I thought about and I picked and I wanted to I wanted to discuss. There's a, a few different types of this. Zhao. Funny, it's funny talking about Zhao. Because Zhao shows up again in Legend of Korra in a really stupid enforced cameo. So, in book one of Avatar The Last Airbender, Zhao dies. He was too arrogant and too self-absorbed to accept help from Zuko when Koizilla was going to kill him. Well, maybe with good, good reason. So, he dies, or, well, I mean, he's taken by Koizilla and... You've never seen him. It's never seen him again, which is the kid-friendly way of saying he dead. So you would think, all right, he's gone. Then Legend of Korra decides, what if we bring Zhao back? So when they go into the spirit world, they see Zhao mumbling about how he's the Moon Slayer, and oh boy, was that stupid. Okay. We don't need to see Zhao again. It, it, it's something that Legend of Korra did a lot of. It's this stupid pandering fan service. It's not even like good fan service. Like Suki, bringing in Suki multiple times in the show was, in Avatar The Last Airbender, was good fan service. Having her join the main team was good fan service. Suki was really popular, so they kept bringing her back. It made her more important. But they managed to make that a part of the story. And in fact, her coming back and actually dating Sokka had one of the best like arcs in their development, particularly um, Sokka and how he was affected by the death of Yue. It was all very interesting and very well handled. Now, just bringing back Zhao and plopping him in for a short cameo, it was stupid. It just, he's a character who should just be gone. Look, his fate was kind of ambiguous on what exactly happened. Did they just straight up dead him? Does he drag to the spirit world to suffer forever? Well, they confirmed that in Legend of Korra. And they didn't have to. It's it's one of those things, it's just like it's like Darth Plagueis in the Star Wars prequels. It's something that you leave to the imagination. Because it's so much more interesting than just spelling it all out. It's like, no, we didn't need to see Zhao again. And yes, he's technically dead, it's complicated, but he's still there, and they bring him back, and it's like, okay, we didn't need to. We didn't need to see that. Now, next one to talk about is Agent Smith. Uh, you, you mentioned Agent Smith. I can't talk about Slappy, because I know nothing about Goosebumps. I don't, know, I don't know anything about that, so i can't talk about it but i can talk about agent smith and i really like that you brought up agent smith because this is probably one of the prime examples of a character that should have just died this is one of my number one examples agent smith was a great antagonist in the first matrix movie he was great i loved him in that movie 
He, he should have just died. Look, Neo kills him at the end of the movie. That was the conclusion of their conflict. And it was a nice way of him finally turning the tables on Agent Smith when once Neo realizes, I'm in a digital world. Like, I don't have to obey these rules. And that's when he finally becomes the one and just psh, explodes Agent Smith. And then Agent Smith somehow comes back in Matrix Reloaded and he can now clone himself for something? It was dumb. And in fact, um, if I had rewritten The Matrix, if, if you gave me The Matrix sequels, Reloaded and uh, Revolution, if you had given me you know, the chance to write out the sequels, what I would have done is Agent Smith would have just been dead. There would have been other agents. But Agent Smith himself would have been dead. He never would have come back again. Those, um, those albino guys actually would have been um, major antagonists being like viruses in the system. So they're the ones who can infect stuff and ruin things. And you take that French guy who is just weird and actually make him a threatening villain. Like a, an actual threatening villain. He was just... I really didn't like him in the movies. Actually make him interesting, you know... There's stuff you can do with that. You don't need Agent Smith. And this is the problem with this. And I'm going to be going into a couple of other things. They really sh need to stop thinking, we need this popular villain or else no one will care. Look, there are some people who just really love a certain character. That's understandable. If they love a really popular villain and that villain dies, well, first of all, if the story is well written, their death shouldn't be bad. And you shouldn't need to feel like you have to bring a character back, even if it makes no sense just because they're popular. Because that's, that's creatively bankrupt, to be perfectly honest. And it just feels like you don't know what you're doing, so instead of trying to do something creative, you just default to, let's bring back a popular character even though it makes no sense. You could have had an interesting story going into the Matrix sequels. I kind of feel like Matrix is a good movie by itself, and you don't need sequels. And I feel like we would have been better off if we just didn't get the sequels. But if we're going to have sequels, they should have been better written. And they invented other antagonists. Do something with that instead of bringing in Agent Smith. It's like, yes, there's some cool scenes, but a few scenes... And an otherwise really bad story where Agent Smith coming back is a huge part of the story not working very well. Yeah, I, I can sacrifice those for a better story. Now, let me talk a little bit about Ruby. Okay, so there are characters that should have died. There are characters that should not have died. And I've talked a bit about that before. But there's one character in particular that I really want to pick out as having should have died... And frankly, multiple times, is Cinder. Okay, Cinder was initially the primary antagonist from the first two to three volumes. Yeah, the first three volumes. After that, she's basically responsible for some of the, the deaths of some of the best characters in the franchise. And she seemingly dies. Or something. And she comes back. Darn. But then, in Volume 5, right when she thinks she's going to have her big fight with Ruby, she fights Jean for some reason, and then kind of screws off and fights Raven, because why build up a conflict between two characters when you could just ignore it? Why, why fulfill the promises? You know, it's something Ruby specializes in. Completely wasting plot lines. And Volume 6 was excellent at that. But in the end of Volume 5, Cinder seems like she's frozen, thrown down this chasm, and she's going to be dead. All right, fine. Okay, we're tired of her. She's a boring character. She's been boring. They didn't do anything to make her not boring. She's the personality of a freaking Cinder block, and she has no character. She's also, her acting's really mediocre because of her actress... Jessica Negri. There's really nothing going for her. And then they bring her back in Volume 6. Why? 
I genuinely don't know. In fact, I don't even think Cinder is that popular, especially compared to basically every other villain. Even the crappy Volume 4 villains like Hazel Watts and Tyrion and Salem. Oh dear, why do they bring her back? Yeah, and this, this is a case of they really want to make Cinder a major player. And they, they did that in the first couple of volumes. It didn't really work. In fact, I've always said that the worst scenes in Volume 2 were all of Cinder's scenes. Anytime Cinder's on screen, the quality drops. And when she's gone, the quality of Volume 2 is really pretty good. To good to actually great. And then when Cinder comes in, it's just like, ugh. So, but then they really wanted to make her important. And then in Volume 3, she is the antagonist. Like, two, like the major antagonist. Okay, she basically wins and destroys everyone, and the only reason she loses is because Ruby pulled out a deus ex machina out of literally nowhere. Okay, so is she dead? No. Alright, so you're gonna build up her conflict and hatred of Ruby. Alright, good. Alright, so that's something interesting. Her failure and her burning hatred for Ruby. Alright. And then they waste that. And then it seems like they kill her off. And then they bring her back. Okay, we're just gonna do this whole rigmarole again. Just let her die. Just let her die. She should stay dead. Now, there's a different type of this. Of like, of this issue. And this is when a character is actually dead, but the writers keep bringing them back in other ways. And because it's clear that they either don't know what to do without them, or they're so, you know, desperate to cling on to that character's popularity, that that they think it would be wrong to not have them stay around. The first one I want to talk about is Handsome Jack. Now, Handsome Jack died in Borderlands 2. He's dead. D E D dead. All right, he's dead. He's gone. Then, in Borderlands, the pre the pre-sequel, they bring back Jack because it's a prequel, so then they focus the story on Jack, It's which would have been an interesting idea if the game wasn't an absolute pile of garbage and one of the most worthless pieces of crap I've ever played. I genuinely think that's the worst game I've ever played. It's, <clears throat> it's, it's awful in pretty much every capacity, except for a few few slightly interesting things. Okay, but that's a prequel, right? It's not like a sequel where they bring him back. And then you have Borderlands, or Tales from the Borderlands, where they bring back Jack through Hollow Jack, which, to be fair, is a kind of interesting idea, because Hollow Jack is an is a computer recreation of Jack, and the character main character Reese, who has like cybernetics and stuff, has him in his head. Okay, so this is interesting because he's built up as sort of a Jack fanboy, but now here is actual handsome Jack, or at least a, a fairly accurate representation of him, messing around on his head. The problem is, is that the story basically ends up revolving around this, and he just feels so ham-fisted, especially by the time of the end of the story, it's like he just takes over, it's like, oh. Well, okay. And then they get rid of him. Okay, like, then what was the point? Look, the idea of Hollow Jack was an interesting idea of a character, of bringing back the character without bringing him back. But the problem, like, the problem with Tales from the Borderland is that every episode after episode two was a steaming pile of garbage. It was stupid. And it just kept continuing to get stupider as the story went on. And I thank Anthony Birch and his involvement in writing the story for that because, holy crap, Anthony Birch is an incompetent moron. But okay. It, Hollow Jack could have worked. If you didn't make him so freaking important and you didn't have him, like, take over the story, it could have worked. It, it, it could have worked. And on top of that, you know, Tales from the Borderlands, it's like, they waste through, like, three major villains in the first season alone, and it's just like, oh, you go through Vasquez, you go through Big Fat Mama, I don't remember what her name is, 
Val, Val, Val? I don't remember. She was really boring and completely unmemorable. And then you got Owl Jack. Frankly, all you really needed was Vasquez as the main villain. Patrick Warburton would have been great. But, uh, they had other ideas. And you know, it's the fact that the only thing, like, yes, Hollow Jack had some memorable lines and some memorable scenes. And there are actually some great scenes that I do like, particularly ones that uh, actually give some more enlightenment to Jack's thoughts and feelings on stuff, particularly his feelings for Nisha, which is something that the actual other games barely really touched on. The pre-sequel didn't make any sense, and Borderlands 2 only has a few lines about it. And then it's like, here, oh, having him talk about it. All right, that's nice. That's what it should have been used for. It's sort of like expand things, but then it's just like, nope, he's going to take over Hyperion, and we're going to completely F up the entire continuity, which is basically what episodes, every episode after episode one did. So it was just, and, and you know, you can tell that they were so obsessed with Handsome Jack that they just refused to let him go. You have Handsome Jack in all of the games except the first game. And when they had released a collection, they released the Handsome Jack collection. Let him go. It's like, I swear, if they brought back um, Handsome Jack in any way in Borderlands 3, if they ever make that game, which I wouldn't touch that game with a 10-foot pole, even if they did, but it's like, no, you, you can't do it. Just stop. Get some help. Just stop. It's like, look, Handsome Jack was popular. Handsome Jack was cool. Handsome Jack was a great villain in Borderlands 2. But move on. Seriously. Another case that's almost identical in a lot of ways, but, uh... Joker and Arkham Knight. I love the Arkham games. Uh, Arkham Asylum was great, even though I never actually played all of it. I mostly watched a friend play that way back when it came out. I love Arkham City and I love Arkham Origins. I think Arkham Origins gets way too much of a, you know, in, people complain way too much about that game. I really liked Origins. Then Arkham Knight comes out and it's supposed to be the end of the main trilogy. All right, sweet. And then it's stupid. Holy crap, did they mess this up. One of the biggest problems is the fact that the Joker has such incredible prominence in this story when he's literally dead. Okay, one of the things that I thought was an actual really bold move to do in Arkham City was to actually kill the Joker. Now, the Joker, in pretty much every single continuity ever, has died, and usually died multiple times, there's a reason that the trope Joker Immunity exists. It's named after him. Because, gosh dang it, will he not die? And that's usually because he's so freaking popular. But, you know, he was the main villain in Arkham Asylum. He was the main villain in uh, Arkham City. Or one of the main villains. He was definitely a primary player in Arkham City. And then he was a major player in um, Arkham Origin. So you get into Arkham Knight. And you're like, okay. All right, this is going to be the finale. Joker is dead. Who's going to take over? And you had all this build up for Scarecrow, and you had all this hype for Scarecrow, and then what happens? The Joker takes over the plot, even when he's dead. Come on, guys. Because now there's this stupid hallucination Joker, which, okay, if that was done very tastefully for like a certain part of the game, maybe, maybe using the, the fear toxin. If that was only for a part, that would have been interesting. But they have him in so much of the game, taking over the story. And now there's some stupid BS about how his, his blood will turn people into him. It's not just the fact that there was the, the Titan formula poisoning in his blood. Oh, no, no. The, the blood will turn people into the Joker, which... That's not how this works. That's not how this works. Oh, As a Batman fan, Arkham Knight is... It's practically on the same quality as The Dark Knight Rises as being absolute worthless garbage. It's just... It's insulting. And for a game series that was fine... Like, Batman games that were awesome and had interesting stories. It's like, then we just... 
they just poop it out because they can't let go of the Joker. Some people complained about the Joker coming in and hijacking the plot of Origins, but okay, I thought it was actually, I thought it worked. I thought it worked. And if they wanted to tell more stories after that, you could still expand on what's going on with the other villains. But with Arkham Knight, we've already had so many games featuring the Joker. We don't need the Joker to come in and just hijack the plot again. It's It was insulting. And it was boring. It's stupid. Look, look. It raw, it like, basically, when you kill off a character and they're gone and you mean to kill them off, if you bring them back like this over and over, and I'm saying, like, this is a death that I thought really worked well. I genuinely think that killing the Joker at the end of Arkham City was an interesting plot choice. So moving into Arkham City, there's a, essentially a power vacuum. Who's going to take over what the Joker did? And that's the idea, is you have all these other villains sort of vying for attention. You have Harley, and you have Scarecrow, and you've got Two-Face, and you've got Penguin, and you've got Mr. Freeze, and you've got all these other villains. And then what do they do with that? More Joker! And it basically renders that entire great scene at the, begin at the end of Arkham City where the Joker dies. It just renders that almost, Im you know unnecessary it makes it robs that scene of any of the emotions that it had because now joker is just still basically walking around he's just in batman's head and you know you people can turn into jokers now i've seen stupid comic book plots but this this is terrible and frankly, there was a great scene at the beginning of, of of arkham knight that i thought really worked well because it shows the joker's corpse and you have to press a button to activate, to cremate the body. That, I thought, was really interesting. When I realized I had to push that button, I was like, oh, wow, by Joker, wow. And then, okay, you, you, you ruined it. I mean, granted, they ruined a lot with that, but. Oh boy, yeah, those are, those are two examples that are a little different than normal. But the last one I really... Oh, no, there's a couple more I wanted to talk about, actually. One I wanted to talk about. Captain Hook. Captain Hook in Once Upon a Time, actually, very specifically. He should have died. Frankly, he shouldn't have lasted as long as he did. But okay, all right. I've, I've already talked about issues going on with Captain Hook before. And I was talking about the anti-heroes. And how he was a failed anti-hero. Captain Hook should have died, and I honestly think he probably should have died in either, like, probably season three. Look, there are two ways I think you really could have taken a death with him. First of all, maybe he wants to redeem himself. Maybe he starts realizing that what he's done was terrible. Maybe he realizes he's become so consumed with revenge that he has become the very monster he sought to fight, even though he was already a monster. But okay, all right, you know, let's go with that. And then he dies a redemption death. Maybe maybe saving Rumpelstiltskin. Maybe saving Balefire. Because he's also a victim in what Hook did. Maybe he could have died for Neil. Could have been an interesting idea. Or you could have taken it in a way that he was so consumed by his revenge that in his attempt to get back at Rumpelstiltskin... He just gets himself killed. And you could have handled that in a bunch of different ways, whether Rumpel has to kill him himself, or because of the situation, he just ends up getting himself killed. And the whole lesson to be pulled from his death is not letting yourself become consumed with that revenge. And in fact, maybe this also could have worked in helping Rumpelstiltskin's development of really kind of... Maybe you, yeah, they always had him teetering on the edge of going back to being evil or not, and then they would have him do stupid stuff, and then it'd be like, oh, but Rumpelstiltskin, is he still a bad guy? It's like, okay. You could have had Hook being just bad to the bone and desperately trying to get revenge at the cost of everyone else. You continue that plot thread, and then he gets himself killed for it, and then Rumpelstiltskin sees that death, and he realizes that 
if he really, if he doesn't like wise the hell up and stop, that that's going to be him. He's going to lose everything he cared about. He's going to lose every person that even remotely cared about him or that he cared about. And he's going to end up a cold corpse on the ground with no one to care about him if he doesn't really turn around. And that, that really could have been, along with you know re reuniting with Neil and you know having a st stabilizing his relationship with Bell, that really could have been a way to ferment him as a good guy and have him be, okay, no, I want this. I... I don't want to just be the dark one. I want to I want to have I want to be with Belle. I want to be with my son. I want to have my family. You could have really used that to tie this together. That's probably what I would have done in the story. Is you give uh, Hook this this death that's his own cause because he's so obsessed with his revenge that he just that he was too blinded to even have any real self-preservation. It could have been an interesting way, and it, I honestly think it would have been a nice way to, you know, kill off Captain Hook in a way that made sense with his character, dropping all of the faux anti-hero bullcrap. And I think it would have been interesting, but frankly, they, they didn't do that. They made him, they just continued on with the stupid bullcrap of trying to make him look better. Sigh. Now, the last one I want to talk about, Finn in The Last Jedi. Okay, okay. The Last Jedi is worthless garbage. I think we can all agree on that. But there was one scene at the end where Finn was going to sacrifice himself to destroy the cannon to stop it from blasting through to the Resistance. And I know I'm not the only one who thought this, but the idea that Finn was going to heroically sacrifice himself and save everyone and become that hero especially if you're trying to dredge up the whole plot line the character arc of him not running away or or fighting what he hates look if you want to have that stuff they could have had him die and frankly this is the old that that was something that i might have actually given ryan johnson a little bit of credit for as much as i don't want finn to die because in a better written sequel trilogy i think finn would have made a great character to develop over the course of the trilogy but in the movie of the last jedi where everything is stupid and nothing makes sense if Finn sacrificed himself he destroyed it he went all um what was his name from independence day and was just like, I'm back! And destroyed the cannon. Saved everyone, sacrificing himself. I think that might have actually genuinely been a halfway decent thing. It would have had Finn showing true bait bravery. And it would have, it would have given the movie a little bit of weight. Because the movie robs itself of any real tension and weight. Basically, every five seconds because it doesn't really know what it's doing but that one scene and the build-up and as Finn's driving in and you know and it's just the you know everyone's telling him to come back and his little uh, skiff hovercraft whatever thing is flying towards it and it's falling apart and he's about to get there and then it could have had meaning before Rose just and knocks him out of the way and probably could have killed them both it's, it would have been something interesting. And I'm not saying that because Finn dying would be inherently interesting. I'm just saying that if Finn actually did that and he genuinely tried to make that sacrifice, in a movie where everything else is terrible, we could have had at least, at least one poignant scene. Everything else was trash, but we could have had one meaningful scene. And yes, if I was writing the movies, I wouldn't kill Finn off. Of course not. I'd have him develop through the course of this of the trilogy. I'd I'd bring in Kyle Katarn from the EU and have Kyle an older Kyle Katarn mentor Finn as someone who was also a stormtrooper. There's plenty of stuff I would have done. But you know, if we're talking about just the Last Jedi as it is, then. F Finn, them actually going through with Finn sacrificing himself would have at least 
been slightly interesting. So yeah, that's about it for this topic. You can definitely comment below with other characters that you think should have died because there is a ton of them and I, I didn't even touch on a fraction of them and I just, because I knew that I would kept going, it would be going way too long. But yeah. So, if you want to submit a topic to me, you can either comment below if you're on YouTube you, or if you're on Tumblr, you can send me an ask of a topic colon and whatever topic you want me to talk about. Or you can also send it through my Discord, and I have a little channel that's just for topic submissions. So you can try that out too. The link for my Discord is, again, down below. If you want to watch last week's topic video, you can check that out here. If you want to watch next week's topic video, you can check that out here when I get that done. So, thank you for watching.